Hey, what it do? Hey, man, y'all know what time it is. Miss that boy do over here, man. Uh, finna give y'all some more quality game that's gonna be spilled on the ground, man, for everybody to pick up, you hear me? Yeah, we got a special guest in the house, man. Uh, uh, I like to call one of the remarkable stories of redemption. Uh, you know, most of us start out going one way and end up another way, uh, good or bad, uh, right or wrong. Uh, so with that being said, I'm gonna have our guest uh, introduce himself. What's going on, Mr. Dennis? How you doing, Mr. White? Uh, uh, you out here raising, raising hell, man. Uh, on the internet. Man. Uh, what you doing, man? Yes, sir. Uh, can, can you introduce yourself to the audience and to the crowd for me? Yeah, uh, my name is Dennis Sperl, uh, Dennis Damon Sperl. And um, at this time, I'm an attorney, I'm a father. Um, I have my own law practice. I have an entertainment company. I'm, I'm an author, father of three healthy, strong boys. Uh, I live in Houston, Texas. I practice law here, but I'm also licensed in, in multiple states, including New York, Louisiana, Texas, Illinois. Um, and I'm also admitted to practice in the United States Supreme Court. I've been practicing law uh, 22 years, and it'll be... Um, 17 years I've had my own law practice. And, and uh, wow. Doing pretty well myself. Uh, amazing, man. And shout out to my publicist, uh, Dr. O, man, for, for getting you on the show. Uh, oh. No, real talk. Yeah, uh, great. Yeah, All right, yeah. Dr. O. Uh, yeah, so this is uh, for, for the new game related. This is the first, this is our second season. Uh, last year, uh, we had some attorneys on, but this is the first, first year of this season. Uh, with the game related podcast so mr dennis is our first attorney so we go get us some good game but most importantly uh i want to get the backstory to uh to who mr dennis is and they bring that same foolishness up there with them you see what i'm saying like they bring that same mentality it's, it's a mentality it's a dysfunctional mentality that that people bring with them you see what i'm saying and i thank god that at least at a young age, I got a chance to live with my, my adopted father and uh, I saw that there is a difference. Like this ain't the whole world, you see what I mean? At least I knew there was a light at the end of the tunnel before I could see it. I didn't know how I was gonna get there. I knew people who had made it, but I didn't think I had the resources or the help to get there, you know? And it wasn't until this, I, I'm fresh out the riots you know, um, let's talk about this. This, this, how were you doing the Rodney King rides? It, it happened on April 26th. I had just turned 18. Mm. It's a funny story, man. Uh, <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm on Manchester and, uh, between, uh, damn, Manchester between Normandy and, uh, I think right, right where Dinker is. Um, uh, and I'm trying to strip a car. Okay, so somebody had burnt the car out, and I was trying to strip it down because the store was trying to get the seats out of it to put in my little Volkswagen. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and so I guess I must have, and the police was out there. It's that, it's that, it was it the first Sunday or the Friday. I think it was that third. They caught my ass. The police saw my head pop up and pulled over, man. They had me hemmed up, sitting on the curb, man. I'm like, yeah. And I, I made up this BS story. He said, well, what, are we, what are we doing? You want to talk to me before I go talk to my sergeant? And uh, I was like, yeah, man, it's my auntie uh, car, man. And it got stolen from Eaglewood. And what I'm trying to do is take all the good stuff out of it before it gets fired by it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and so I guess they... <laughs> so they went and ran the place. They said, is this something you want to tell me before I go talk to my son? I'm like, yeah, man, that, see that Volkswagen behind the liquor store? I said, that's not, I'm just trying to get the seats out of it. He's like, where you live around the corner? And I, and crazy thing is, man, you know, that was normal, but that could have really, I could have been set up for a felony. And, and yeah. You know, and then, now check this out. Two weeks later, right? Two weeks later, I get a phone call. I'm in the gym. I'm in the, in the, in the, in the, uh, weight room and man of large lifting weights it's like 2 30. school about to close and i told you about that fight i had with that dude right mm -hmm. and so uh they called me to the principal's office i'm like man i don't feel like dealing with this right now so i'm like and then my coach said you got to go go on over there they called you got to go so i started walking over there i'm walking slow 
I'm like, man, I ain't trying to deal with this. I could just not, I could wait till the bell ring and then go home. So it, a five minute walk take me like 15 minutes. So by the time I get to the principal office, man, the bell rings, the, I see the principal, Dr. Robert Barner, and he'll, he'll testify to this to this day. He is walking out of his office with a, with a college recruiter. And the college recruiter had come up there looking for two people. One young lady named Darlene Stevenson and another young man named Michael Green. And he said, uh, he gave them that, he met with them, sat down, talked to them, met with them earlier. And then apparently he, he had asked the principal, was well, there one more? And what he meant was, is there one more person who passed that, the SAT with the 750? Because all I mean, I, that ain't nothing, right? 750 ain't nothing. But it's the minimum standards to get in. I had a 2.66 and a 750. And so Dr. Barner called me to the way from the way room. And, and it turns out, man, he was a historically black university college recruiter. And he had one application left hmm. out in his car. And he had only brought two. <laughs> they, they gave me permission to go out to his car, man. And it was one application to go to Grandma State University. $25, man. I'll never forget that. I went down to the post office got my $25 um, uh, after that day I, I got my little uh, money order and I sent it in and I got accepted but the crazy thing was I'm like man I can't get into school because I got a 2.6 GPA and I got a 750 he said no you can I said what do you mean I said because in, in California schools I can't get in he said we don't care about that Spanish out there man we understand what you've been through the fact that you took the SAT on my own from now. Yeah. I spent my own little money doing that because I knew I wanted to try to set myself up. But man, lo and behold, man, long story short, my first semester at Grambling, I made it in biology. I got a two, 3.8 GPA. I got all A's and I got one F in, in math. <laughs> All black boys struggle with math. That's the black girl's uh, subject. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't have no helicopters flying over, man. I wasn't getting set trips on, man. I, I didn't have to worry about what color. I had three meals to eat a day with fresh air. People was nice to me. I was happy to be gone, man. And Say that. that. So you sound free. Yeah, yeah, so you feel right free now. Right there, right there. Did you, so you finally get your first taste of freedom. Yeah. 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 And when you get that first, when you get that fresh air. When you get that fresh air, you just said, when you get that fresh air, you excelled. What you thinking about when you thinking about home? Like when you when you when you sit back and now you got this freedom and you go to back thinking like all the stuff that 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 you went through at home. Yeah. Now you got a new friend. You got a new partner you you around campus and y'all having this conversation. I mean, how do you feel about everybody else that's, that's still at home? Well, well, let me say this, man. I think I didn't realize, I, I knew I didn't want to go home. And that's why I studied so hard. I ain't had no girlfriend. I wasn't, I wasn't giving nobody no problems. There was a lot of dudes that would come out there. They would come to Grambling. I don't know if you know where Grambling is. It's in the middle of nowhere in North Louisiana. No, okay? yeah. It's between Shreveport. And, and and Monroe, which ain't nowhere between nothing. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And so, man, it was a lot of dudes would come out there and they act tough. They from California. I'm from Chicago. I'm from California. I'm like, nigga, we out in the middle of the motherfucking country. What are yeah. you talking about? Yeah. Yeah. What? Why are you talking? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then come to find out, and hold up, then come to find out they not even from LA. They from like Pacoima and and Rancho Cucamonga and Pasadena, like you yeah. said, so I'm from the hood. Like I'm not, I'm out here. I'm, I, bro. I literally had post-traumatic stress syndrome from mm. growing up in South Central LA. I heard sirens every day, helicopters yeah. every day. Yeah, and so it's like, man, I'm not playing here. I'm. This is my escape. I don't want to go home and, and live with my mom and my mom in the back garage and probably get put out. She's Thanks. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so, like, if I go back, there ain't nothing to go back to. So I'm going to have to stay here and drive. But I did go back and visit. And I remember getting off the plane. And I remember how my mind just got tight the closer I got to, 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 to goddamn Century and Western. I remember by the time I got to Century and Western, after getting off that plane and feeling all free like that, 
and just seeing the graffiti on the wall and interpreting, okay, who beefing with who and blah, blah, this, that, and the other. So, man, I, I, I realized then, man, I can't stay here. I, hey, I you, so listen, he said, I, I want the audience to hear this. He said he got off the plane feeling free, and he started looking at the graffiti on the wall, taking in information, saying who beefing with who. <laughs> That was the internet. The wall was the internet back then. That was their social media. Nigga name, yeah. Uh, but you know from the city to read the walls. Yeah. Think, think about that, homie. You going back into a war zone. So uh, for, you explained the, 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 the emotional response. Your mind got tight. Uh, yeah. Man, uh, I, I get it now. Uh, you don't have a choice out there. Your choice is removed. Right, you on alert. You you on alert. You looking at anybody. You you can't even look at people out there. Like I told you, what happened to me when I even staring at somebody too long as their car passes by, you could get a what's up. That's prison, and that's trouble. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah that what's up could be death. That's prison talk. Yeah, yeah. It, it's not even. It don't. It, 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 it doesn't even make sense. People think, oh, you got to have a certain color on and be in a certain no. You're dealing with a lot of angry people, a lot of scared people, a lot of uptight people, and and, and, and you just it can pop off and then who you know, was listen and listen who was born into these conditions and this all they know right. they now was you, born angry you you listen now you just coming to visit you just moving in mm -hmm. these people was yeah. born into a war zone. Hmm. You know, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't have believed you. I just thought you was another dude running game, running some crime. They had to actually show me uh, there was something better other than what I'm what I'm doing out here. You know, it, you had to show me better. You know, and uh, thank God I got a chance to go to the HBCU, Grambling. You know, the little saying is where everybody is somebody. And once I once I I was shown that, you know, them good country folks up in North Louisiana treated me well, bro, and that's why I ain't never left the South. You understand what I'm saying? You know what I want to say, man? I'm gonna say it again. Shout out to Dr. O. We asked the question. And you said you gotta show him. <clears throat> so I'm gonna say this here. I think that's what we just did. By having you on this platform. And by having you being able to tell your side of the story, I think we showing them. I think we really showing them that this what it looked like just to get out. If you give them an opportunity. If you give them an opportunity to get out, this what the results are. These are the results. So, 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 man, I want to thank you again, man. Yeah, but go uh, ahead. Yeah. I, 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 uh, uh, you you make me. Uh yeah, man. So now check this out. Now that y'all got an opportunity to see that, y'all make sure y'all go over there to the gang related podcast, man, and uh, go over there, like, subscribe, share, man. And I want y'all to see that, man. We able to talk about multiple things, hoping that you know it it, it gets it gets to one person, man, and. You know, we can reach everybody else, man. So make sure y'all go like, subscribe, and share, man. Go over there to the Gang Related Podcast. Y'all, let's get it and make a change.